guys, Jeff Chalmers here from discoverdoublebass.com, which is the home of online learning for double bass players. So if you want to find out more about classical music, jazz music, bluegrass music, whatever you're working on, we have something for you. And if we don't right now, we will very soon because we've been producing, been producing a series of new courses. And I'm really excited to welcome back one of our most popular tutors. He is known as the host of Concert for Bass Conversations, the voice of the double bass world. It's Jason Heath. Jason, thank you so much for joining me today. Jeff, pleasure always. I love it. As I, it's so great to work on projects with you, and it's just great to be here hanging out and working on this new course. We just have such a fun time doing this. And we last uh, connected a couple of years ago, pre-pandemic, and um, we were working on these courses really looking at kind of adult learners uh, wanting something interesting something different and your beginners course has been really popular and i've really enjoyed um working on it with you so yeah congratulations on some great work well, thank you. And and we had this idea, and I don't remember whose idea it was, but we were talking about wouldn't it be great for this next course to to find some composers and get some original music written? And what a journey! And it's been so fun uh, working with these people and learning this music. And I really do think we've got something for everybody in these uh, new pieces. Yeah, uh, we've put together uh, a new course for people going beyond the basics, beyond you know the fundamentals. Who uh, classical music. Uh, looking for something interesting to play whilst they're working on the technique. So you're teaching, of course, thumb position, uh, more advanced bowings, there's some more spiccato lessons in there, the kind of stuff that you'd be working on after you have some experience. And we've also commissioned uh, seven pieces by these incredible uh, composers and really exciting individuals within the bass world. And what I was hoping today was that we could talk through each of the pieces and highlight the composers and really give them a, a bit of a shout out and a feature on, on the channel. So why don't you introduce the first person that comes to mind from the seven that we have, Jason? Who is it? Whose piece are you going to tell us about first? Absolutely. And what I love is we we asked these composers, we told them the, the, the idea behind this course, but we also said, write in your own voice, write the, the way that you write. And, and these composers did that so elegantly. And so I, I think I'll start by mentioning Craig Butterfield's piece, which if you've watched any recent Discover Double Bass content, you'll notice this has actually become the theme song, yes. am I correct, for Discover yes. Double Bass. So I, lo I loved it. We, we used, there's, we did a promotional video where you're playing the piece in the background, and I used a snippet of that, but it was just a little bit too long. I think the tempo was uh, slower. So then I got back in touch with Craig and said, Craig, I really love this. Can we use a snippet of it? And then he recorded a special version, uh, version which is the, the music you will have heard at the beginning and usually at the end of these videos. Um, so that piece is called Decades End. I Decades believe. End, exactly. And it's one of my favorites. It's just, it, it's, I mean, as you say, we're asking the composers to write in their own voice, and Craig certainly done that, hasn't he? Yeah, and Craig is known for writing traditional music, new grass, American roots music, and we also, he knew that we were kind of basing this chorus around the Raboff positions, which essentially yes. just means basing the piece around the harmonics on the bass. Yeah. So you've got... And so Craig came up with this piece that just so elegantly sits on the bass. So one of the themes, kind of getting into the main theme, he takes and he has like a... Where the tuning harmonics are. Then you go up to the neck block, another yeah. main spot. So you get this really nice chord progression. Yeah. And then you lead into this great double stop section. And then... It's just it's just diatonic melodies against an open string, but it's amazing that sort of Americana feel that you get from those, and then variations, and just such a cool piece. It sounds so open, doesn't mm -hmm, it? And mm -hmm. just kind of uh, optimistic and mm -hmm. hopeful. I, I love it. It's mm -hmm. one of my favorite pieces. And, and if you don't know Craig's music, obviously everybody watching at home needs to go and check him out because he is not only a virtuoso player in the truest sense of the world, but word. But he's also an incredible uh, composer, and he plays in some really interesting uh, bands such as the Boomtown Trio. Um, so who else have we worked with then, Jason? There were seven composers. How about we give a shout out to um, uh, Valentina Ciardelli, because we've been listening to her piece, or you've been performing her piece just a few moments ago, 
Um, and tell us a little bit about your experience of this piece. What's it called, first of all? It's called Bricks Number One. And Valentina, you had Valentina in to do an interview over the pandemic, and she's just one of my favorite people, and is somebody who's really into all sorts of different aspects of new music and the bass, and Frank Zappa is a major influence. And this piece was the one piece out of these seven that was written with piano, but yes. it's optional. And maybe we can cut to a clip of a performance of that. Yeah, let's have a listen to hear what uh, this piece sounds like in context with the piano. <laughs> There are many influences in this piece. Paul Hindemith wrote a wonderful bass sonata, and I definitely hear some aspects of that. The pianist Megan and I were talking about that, but it's really Valentina's own style, and she wrote it in this modular way, so you can work on each section. It's very clearly marked out in the music, and it's kind of like a series of etudes that kind of assemble into a piece, and it's just a great next step for somebody getting into a more challenging repertoire on the bass. Yeah, because the, the register is quite accessible. For me, when I saw it, uh, and, uh, the first thing I thought is it's rhythmically complex and it's easy to kind of, you have to really take on board those phrases and, and so you don't trip yourself up. But if you were reading it through for the first time, you'd certainly be thinking, you know, the, the challenging part is the rhythm. Absolutely. And the register, it only goes up to the octave harmonic here, so everything yeah. stays down here. And it's a cool piece to do on your own, but putting it together with the piano, it, they complement each other so well. Really cool new addition to the bass repertoire. Well, we've talked about a solo piece, a piece with piano. Um, one of the other very special things that we've done in this course is, uh, and this all comes from saying basically create whatever you want in your own voice, is we approached uh, the composer Mason Bynes and she uh, wrote her piece, what, meditation, music for meditation? Um, let me look to be sure. I have it right here. Uh, music, yeah, good job. Music for, yeah. music for meditation. Uh, yeah, so Mason's piece turned up and she provided a backing track. And just tell us a little bit about that and then we'll hear, hear it as well. So how, what's, it, what's it all made up of? Well, I was just so pleased to check out this piece and to listen to this, and you're hearing this beautiful vocal score that that she's singing, and then these sounds of nature. And it's just this incredibly peaceful piece. It starts on D flat, but it's quite diatonic in the key and lots of fifths right across the string. Those are the first intervals, and you can play it straight tone. You can do vibrato. You can take lots of bows. There are so many different ways to explore this. It's just this absolutely beautiful melody. And then when you add in the backing track, it just takes on a whole new dimension. Yeah, it really is quite special. So let's cut to that and we can have a listen to here. Just a little snippet of Mason Bynes' Music for Meditation. <laughs> Yeah, as you see, it's a, a really cool piece, and I was I was so thrilled to open it up. And I think that's been one of the exciting things is seeing which direction all of the composers have gone, and it is so different. And taking it right back to um, another one of our favorite people in the bass world, uh, an incredible composer. He he absolutely had to be included because of uh, his concerto is so widely performed and he is writing so much incredible music for the double bass, uh, Andres Martin. And his piece, um, 
whose name escapes me. What's under us is Peace Jason. Temple. Temple, of yep. course. Yep. Yeah, and Temple is, he has done something really clever because we asked every, uh, all the composers to make it accessible for you know learners who are going beyond the basics. So it's not, uh, you know, the, everything they can throw at it. And they've been really creative within this brief. And Andres's piece is actually, there are two parts. There are two voices which can work independently, or you can play it as a duo. Exactly, yeah. So he, I love this approach because the, the version one, I guess, is down in first position. It's like... <laughs> It's just right all right around in that register. And then the second version is up in thumb position. It's kind of like this. And these two versions sit together so nicely. You can actually perform as a duet. And Andres and I did that in January 2020 at the NAMM show in California. We got out the part. I played the lower part. Andres played the upper part. And it has beautiful, elegant melodies, long melodies. You can work down in the low positions. You can work up in thumb position. And it's just a wonderful piece. Well, we have an open invitation to every composer involved in this project to please come in to discover double bass and, and film themselves performing it. Because I'd love to hear Andres' version, but I'd particularly like to hear you guys play it as a duet. That would be really special. So let's hope that the uh, bass scheduling gods align and we're all in the same location. At, well, I'm sure we will at some point in the future yeah. because he's, he's a good friend and somebody who we enjoy his company. And it'd be great to feature uh, a performance so we can hear those pieces uh, together. Was it? Yeah, was it was it kind of as? How did you find the experience of the duet? Was it was it fun to perform with him? Oh, it was great, and I've played a lot of Andres's music, and it was fun to play something that was written with uh, more of a developing player in mind. But it still has Andres's voice, and 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 sits together so great. And so I, I love his music. There there is such a pathos and just emotion in his music, and that comes through in in this too. It's a really beautiful piece. Yeah, he was a really obvious choice when we were trying to work out. And of course, there were so many wonderful uh, composers and artists in the bass world. Um, next is somebody who I was really excited um, agreed to be involved, you know, that, that they had agreed to be involved. And that's the wonderful Sam Suggs and his piece uh, was entitled Droplet. And it's a really Really cool uh, approach. Why don't you tell us a little bit about Je about that, Jason? Yeah, Sam, we, we, we had described this project to him and we described that we were going to base it around these positions and Sam decided to take an interesting approach and the entire piece almost is at the neck block. So it starts off. <laughs> and there are these little droplets of yeah. harmonic goodness sprinkled throughout. And, and it is incredible, in all of Sam's music, it makes me rethink what the bass can do. And in this piece, I had no idea. You could get all the colors and sounds and harmonic impl implications that you do in this piece. But it is just so cool from all the way. <laughs> throwing in different harmonics and closed notes, and, and it's got this dance, it's got this intro. He does so much in just uh, 32 bars or something like that. It's just an absolutely wonderful, wonderful kind of little microcosm of his sonic universe. Yeah, it's an, it's an awesome piece, and Sam is such an artist, and I'm really thrilled that he's uh, agreed to participate and, uh, and share his, his vision with us. So, who have, who have we missed out? I mean, I, there's a several more names, Jason, but why don't you introduce the next piece? Mm -hmm. Well, my good friend and colleague Donovan Stokes was somebody that I felt like we had to include in this project. And Donovan, whenever I think of Donovan, I know there's going to be some sort of heavy metal influence. And he did not disappoint in this. So this piece is in 5-8, which is a bit of a challenge to someone who hasn't played in mixed meter, but Donovan makes it quite accessible. And it starts off with the open A string, and you're right next to the bridge playing what we call Ponticello and tapping on the side of the bass. So it starts off. And it builds up and builds and builds, and you just play nothing but eighth notes the whole time. All these really cool themes that are using the open string, like a. And 
and just really, really fun to play. It's about three minutes long when you get when you get done with it, and and just an absolutely cool kind of story arc. It gets bigger and bigger, and then it fades away just like it started at the end. It's so ambitious because, as you say, keeping your momentum and being able to build mm -hmm. with those textures and actually develop the. Uh, the theme because it's all there for you. It's uh, as a as a player if you really dig in. I love the. I mean, it's quite guitaristic. What, what about the bit where it's uh, there's like A's, B flats, and C sharps on the G? Um, uh, that section. Do you do you know the? One oh, the. Are yeah, you uh, talking about that? Uh, further lower down, just in a. Uh, lower down in like the neck heel kind of way. There's do ba do da do da do da do. Oh 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 oh. Oh yeah. Yeah, so these are very guitaristic. Just play that for a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it, it, if you just think of chords. And so he's just basically, it's, it's kind of like strumming chords. I'll go slow motion. And so again, kind of taking that 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 idea that we had for this course, and like someone who's developing uh, harmonically, really interesting. But you're just staying in one position. Yeah, it's really it really stood out. It was a great piece. Mm -hmm. One of the exciting things about um, developing this project has been discovering new music and new players. And somebody who was new to me is the wonderful uh, Danny Brof. We were discussing earlier, I may be mispronouncing his name, it may be Brophy, but I think it's Brof. Uh, so Danny Brof is just uh, this wonderful artist and I, f I first heard of him via Instagram. Um, and uh, you know, I was enjoying checking out his music, it was incredibly exciting. And, and, and as a player and as a performer, you know, it really was, he really felt like he's got a, such a strong artistic vision. So his piece didn't disappoint. Again, it's his own unique uh, take on this brief. Uh, and he brought something, yeah, really cool to the table. So why don't you maybe play a bit and tell us a little bit about um, Morning Stretch. Yeah, and I really I get the chance to meet him in person at the Pittsburgh Double Bass Symposium in 2020. And fabulous player. And it was so exciting to discover this piece. And I think the name Morning Stretch is a good one because it's something that I've been doing kind of for my warm-ups, but it really does kind of stretch your technique a bit, including right off from the very beginning, he uses what we call low thumb position. So he starts on an F, throws in a B flat, then he goes to A, and the way that he has you do it is go to the thumb, and then all of a sudden, down to a G. So you are going, so it sounds like, yeah. And then, so it's a very sort of getting the secondary voice. All of a sudden, you've got a couple lines going on at once from the beginning. And it's a very melodic line, the top line, isn't it? So mm -hmm. singing and, mm -hmm. uh, and then this wonderful, yeah, counterpoint moving down. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, and great use of pizzicatos. He has this whole mm -hmm. middle pizzicato stretch. Of Just very, very resonant. And then he adds in some harmonics near the end. like Sam Suggs right there. Yeah. And then and then back to the beginning. So very melodic, throwing in a yeah. few different techniques. He doesn't go above this B flat here, so it's in a very friendly register. And I've actually found this delightful to work on and to play, this really relaxing piece. Couple new techniques maybe for people, but it's been wonderful for me to work on. It'll be really interesting uh, seeing how the composers react to the other composers in the project, because none of them know who the other people are, I don't think. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're aware of everyone else on the project. And, and they certainly haven't heard the pieces. But for me, discovering all of this new music was such a joy and being able to present it within the course. Now, Jason, I've not missed anyone, have I? That we are, Is that all of them? Let's double check. Let's have a little look, uh, uh, just to make um, sure. Drop a decades in the Sorcerer. Temple, Music for Meditation, Bricks, Morning Stretch. We're good. So we're good. That is everybody yeah. uh, that we've covered. And it's it's come together in a really exciting way because we've got your very clear technique lessons, which are, as, as to be expected, very in-depth and logical and easy for people to understand. But along the way, we've broken up the course with this modern music. And what we hope is that people will go out there into the world and perform this, 
um, and enjoy, you know, in, enjoy kind of spreading the, uh, the music of these wonderful composers. Yeah, because we, we learn techniques in order not to just play scales. I mean, playing scales is great, but probably we want to do other things. And, to, to, and, and the bass world is so exciting right now. There are so many people writing for this instrument and exploring new territory. And it's just so cool to include some music and, and music written with this course in mind for this course. I yeah. just think it's a great idea. So whoever came up with it, <laughs> <laughs> I think it was you, Jeff, but is I just yeah. I'm really, really happy with how this has all turned out. It's definitely been on the horizon for a while. And um, yeah, I, I'm thrilled as well. I've never had the experience of commissioning music before and um, to think that this stuff has uh, we've been privileged to, you know, to access artists like this and to bring this music out, you know, collaboratively. And you play the music wonderfully in the course, Jason. So, you know, congratulations on doing such a fine job. I mean, just today, this is a new instrument to you, uh, provided uh, by uh, Randy Hunt. So we're over in Nashville, and if you want to go and check out a double bass, um, what's your experience been of playing his bass? It really is a beautiful uh, sounding instrument, and it looks gorgeous too. Yeah, it's a wonderful bass. It's got this wonderful resonating cavity, just really nice, big-bodied sound. I think this A string, these notes, just absolutely, I, I just I just love the sound of this bass. As soon as I picked it up and I heard you play a few pizzicato notes, I thought, all right, we're gonna have fun today. And <laughs> this, I, I just settled right into this and it's been really fun. Just the, the richness and the character of this bass has yeah. really made a, this a very fun day. Yeah, it's been really cool. So thank you so much to Randy uh, for sharing his instrument. If you want to find out more about Randy Hunt's double basses and his repair work here in Nashville, you can follow the links below this video. Jason, of course, thank you for joining me again. It's been a complicated project uh, with all of the things happening in the world, but I'm thrilled that we've been able to complete it and share this uh, with the double bass community. And most of all, we need to thank the composers for sharing their creative vision. And I'm really thrilled that we're able to publish that on Discover Double Bass. So make sure that you're subscribed to Contrabass Conversations. I'm sure you all are already. Uh, go and check out Discover Double Bass if you want to learn more about Jason's course. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.